Okay, so this short video is just designed to give you a few tips on using your new Fulton Supercomputing account and using SSH and SCP to access the interactive node on the Fulton Supercomputer. So, you probably already watched the videos that demonstrated PuTTY, um, and now I'd just like to show you a few more tips to using PuTTY and to using WinSCP. Um, if you're using a Linux or Mac OS machine, you can find resources on the Fulton Supercomputing site that will point you to Linux and Mac OS applications or features that are similar to the applications demonstrated here. So to start, I want to go to the Fulton Supercomputing website real quick so that we can look at a few of the features available there. Okay, to begin, I'd really recommend going to look at the resources available. Here you can see pages on the available system, storage, and others. Um, I think you'll be surprised at the, the amount of resources available through Fulton Supercomputing. There's a lot of computational power in the machines available. Here there's a lot of good documentation, some stuff on getting started. There's information on the PBS scheduler. Um, here you might be interested to see uh, all the applications that are available on the supercomputer, including MATLAB and Python. Down here, you'll find information on using SSH and on file transfer. It's actually in these two pages that you'll find um, the similar resources for Linux or Mac OS users. So you want to go here. Um, here, you can open up a support ticket. Here, go to account management. Here you can find information um, on your account preferences, file sharing groups that'll um, potentially be useful for us as we're writing code together, we can have shared, uh, uh, shared folders. Here you can find total usage stats, so let me bring mine up. Here you can see um, some, some of my usage in the past few months. And now you can look at stats per job, and you can look at the jobs that I've ran. Here they've all been short jobs. You can see the wall time is short. Um, one thing, when you submit jobs, you're required to enter in the estimated amount of time that your job will take. You want to be as accurate as possible because this estimate that you put in will allocate this amount of time and you don't want to be using resources that you don't need. So here you can look at the CPU time that your uh, job took and your CPU efficiency, memory usage, and more. Okay, so now I'd like to um, just show a few things about PuTTY. So let me open up PuTTY. Um, it might be useful to you um, to know how you can save profiles. So here you see that I have three different pro profiles here. If you put in the host name and your username, you can save this as a new session, a new profile. Hit save, and I have a new profile here, and I can do delete that. If I, open up, if I want to open up one of these profiles, I can double click it. If I want to save, if I want to save this username and host name as my default setting, I can just click on default setting and click save. That way, every time I open up PuTTY, I can just click open and it'll automatically take me to my account on the Fulton Supercomputer. Okay, um, though, as I'll show you, I prefer using WinSCP. WinSCP is actually for um, transferring files. It's a front end to the SCP function in Unix, which is the secure copy function, or the secure copy application. So let me open up WinSCP. Um, 
Okay, same thing here. You can save profiles so that you can make them log in quick and easy. If you want to create a new one, just click new, enter in the host name, port username, password, and then when you click save, um, it says not recommended. I like it though because it makes it really convenient to save your password. That way every time I open up WinSCP, I can just I can just click my profile and I don't have to enter any anything in. It'll take me straight to my terminal. So click here and log in. And it takes me right in. I said that I prefer using WinSCP, um, and now that might not make sense because they're two different things. Well, if I just open up WinSCP, I don't have to enter into my password because I have it saved. And if I click here, I can just open quickly open up a new session in Putty. So I just click that, and automatically I have my terminal available here. So let's go back here. The thing about WinSCP is that it makes file transfer really convenient with um, a nice with this nice graphical user interface. So, for example, if I wanted to transfer a file, let's transfer this file. Makes it really easy. I can even transfer a whole folder. Um, one of the most convenient things about WinSCP, though, is that it makes um, editing files really easy. For example, if I wanted to edit this file here, I could just double click it and it'll open up my preferred editor. So it opens up Notepad++ and I can make changes. Um, so for example, let me open up this file in my putty terminal. Here you can see the file. And quit. Now let me make a change here. Click save. Go back to go back to my putty terminal and let's check to see if we made the change here. And as you can see it made the change. And then quit. Okay, now the way to get this set up in WinSCP, go to Options, and it's in your Preferences. So click Preferences. If you go to Editors, right here, you can choose the editors that you'd like. Notepad++ is not automatically there, so I used Add to add it to the list of editors. So I chose an external editor. I clicked Browse, and then I went into program files and pulled out the executable for Notepad++. Okay, if I wanted to change which editor that I'd like to use, I could do that. Say I wanted to use Notepad by doing this. So I'll move it up. That's my first preference. Click OK. Now when I want to edit parallel.py, double click the file and it opens it up in Notepad. So let me change, make the change back to what it was earlier. Save this. And now let's open it up in the terminal. Again, you can see that it is back to normal. Okay, so what if I, for example, wanted to create a new file?
Um, I'm not sure if there's a better way to do this, but as you can see, I don't see any new file here. Or I don't see any button to create a new file here, but I can create new directories. But if I wanted to create a new file, um, the way I'd recommend doing it is to go into your PuTTY terminal. I'd use VI to create the um, VI to create the the file real quickly, and then I I prefer to edit on my on my laptop here using Notepad plus plus. So I'll create a new file. This is. Now I need to save it. If I want to, I can um, insert something in. I'd have to press I to go into insert mode. I could put something in if I wanted to, but I don't have to. I press escape to go back into command mode. And I press shift colon to bring up the commands. And then I have to press W to write it and Q to quit. So that made my new file right here. Okay, now I can go to WinSCP um, and edit it here, but I don't see it. Um, just quick note, it's not there because we need to refresh. Now it's here, double click it. And I can start editing it in Notepad. But let me change that. Okay. Now I can edit my new file. Um, if you'll notice um, up here, you notice the file is actually saved on my hard drive. WinSCP does this all under the hood. It copies over the file to your hard drive. Then as you make changes, you're really only making changes on your hard drive until you press save. And then it makes the changes on the remote, on the remote device. Um, check those changes real quick. They're there. Control colon to quit. Or shift colon. Now something you'll notice. Here I have the file in my editor. What if I close putty in WinSCP? I close this. Now Notepad++ all of a sudden knows that this file disappears. That's because WinSCP, once WinSCP is closed, it deletes all the temporary files off of your hard drive. So this file no longer exists. Do I want to keep it in the editor? No, not really. Okay, so these are just a few tips that make using the supercomputer easier. There are applications and features similar to these in Linux and Mac OS. Again, go to the Fulton Supercomputing website and you can find information about these there. Um, hope this helps. Thanks.